All right, all right, all right. Like the uh, the famous <coughs> Matthew McConaughey would say, I actually um, I don't mind that guy. Um, I read his autobiography and um, Greenlight, which I actually happen to like, and I liked it so much that um, sorry, Levi. We actually named our son um, after his son, Levi. I like the name so much that um, that's how we named him. Yeah, I wish I had a cooler story for how we named our firstborn, but that's it. I read his book. Again, I wasn't a huge fan of Matthew McConaughey. His acting, I mean, come on. He's got kind of, you know, he's kind of a one-trick pony. No offense. Um, but yeah, um, that's how we named our firstborn. So we're here in my beautiful studio here in Copenhagen, Denmark. Uh, what am I doing here in Denmark? I am an American. Um, my wife, who's Norwegian, uh, we had a baby, so I promised her when we first started dating that, you know, if we ended up starting a family, that we'd move closer to home, and her home being Norway. Her and I met in Hawaii, where I spent, where I personally spent about 12 years, and, um, so I made good on my promise. For all you guys out there, be careful what you ask for, be careful what you promise, because you are going to be held liable for it. So, uh, no, it's great. We're here in Scandinavia, um... It is a culture shock, but then again, it's not. Um, I mean, you know, it's it's kind of the Western culture, you know, so that I'm used to. Here in Copenhagen, um, it's super diverse. Uh, it's very international, so, you know, you can get by with English. Now, I do have to say that is a double-edged sword because I, for one, like to get culturally immersed. And um, a big part of that, as you know, is learning the language. So um, the Danish language is very difficult. Um, but, you know, you can get by here in English. So even... You know, again, this is kind of 50-50. You know, like if I go somewhere, you know, I like to speak as much Danish, Norwegian as I can. Um, so I may order in, in Danish. And sometimes they speak or reply back in Danish, which is great because then I can learn. But often they end up replying back in English, which is kind of like, oh, fuck. You know, it's like, <clears throat> um, so you, you can get by, which is great. But again, a double-edged sword in that, um, you know, they you don't get... A lot of opportunities to speak and to learn the language simply because everyone speaks English here. And if you are not great at Danish, they just assume that you'd much rather speak English. So um, it's, you know, it's it's a good thing because you're able to get by. Um, but again, I, for one, would like to learn the language. So it's a little bit difficult in that sense. So, um, yeah, so we're here in Denmark. So we've been here for about, I would say, nine, ten months. Uh, we got through the brutal, brutal Scandinavian winter here. I mean, I did. So I like to say we kind of earned our rights because right now the weather is beautiful. Um, but yeah, I mean, after having lived in Hawaii for 12 years, um, not having to deal with the cold. And I, I don't think the cold was so bad. I think it was just more so the um, the lack of sunlight. You know, I mean, it would get dark at 4.30, 4 o'clock, you know, and then it would be dark until like... Man, it, I mean, it, it just seemed like it was dark all day, and it was very, very quite depressing. As you guys all know, you guys need sunlight to get vitamins and, and stuff like that to feel alive, and you know, you just feel like you're, you know, just going about life in, at night, you know. So it just feels super weird. Um, it does something to your mind. It does something to your, to your psychology. It does something to your body physiologically, and um, that was probably, yeah, probably the toughest thing I, I've had to deal with in terms of like moving somewhere. But uh, we got through it. We're here in summer. It's fantastic here. Um, it really does seem like a whole new country. But um, yeah, so today I want to talk about showing up and more specifically saying yes. Yes is probably <laughs> maybe the second uh, word you learn as, a, as an infant. Probably no is the first one and then yes. Um, the importance of saying yes to opportunities, I think, is quite often either ignored or understated um, in self-improvement. And um, I think it's because it's so easy to, to do and to not do. People think, oh, yeah, of course I'll say yes, you know, to, to situations, um, you know, that may, you know, that may have, you know, uh, great opportunities for growth, for networking, for learning. Um, but oftentimes, again, for whatever reason, Either we're lazy or we're, we're, it inconveniences us or makes us uncomfortable or fearful. Um, we may say no or an indirect way of saying no. It's like, oh, yeah, like I'll, I'll do this, but you never you know, have any intentions of actually doing it. So um, I want to talk to you about the importance of, again, showing up and saying yes to opportunities. Now, I can't tell you how important it is um, to show up. If you have any kind of goal or ambitions at all, 
Um, again, seems like quite a simple thing, right? I mean, to show up. If you have a meeting scheduled, show up. Show up not only in person, but mentally, uh, physically, and be prepared. You know, have some intentions behind what you do. Now, if you're showing up to a meeting, you can simply show up, you know, uh, on time, which is great. Um, if you haven't prepared, you know, that's a whole other story. Um, I would recommend showing up a little bit early. Now, what that says to the other people that are coming is that, okay, you're on your shit, um, you're ready to go, and it shows a level of professionalism, which again, you don't have to necessarily say, I'm, I'm professional, I'm prepared for today. It shows it. And as you guys know, it's not about what you say, but what you do that, that leaves a, um, a lasting impression on people. And um, you know, when you walk through life, most people either don't give a shit about the way they look or how they care themselves or who, if it's someone important or if it's someone that they feel like could, could benefit them in some way, you know, they'll up their game, right? They'll dress nice, they'll do their hair, you know, they'll very, be very polite, they'll clean up their language. Um, but in, in a day-to-day, -day, if you're running to the grocery store or go to the gym, um, you may just be a chronic asshole, you know? And if you are, then that's you, that's okay. I mean, that's who you are. Um, but if you're not, and you, you know, and you're and you're and you're watching this, and you're hearing this, and you're wanting to improve yourself, um, that's something that you really ought to take a really close look at because you could subconsciously be doing it now and today, um, but not under not, not know it or not know that you're doing it. So, um, if that resonates with you, then again, I would encourage you to take a proactive kind of approach to this and see and say like, okay, am I saying yes? To opportunities. I mean, if I'm getting invited out this weekend, you know, am I just sitting at home and Netflixing alone and just, you know, grabbing a glass of wine, which again, it's okay. I mean, I, I, I love to do that too, you know, minus the drinking, of course. Um, but if someone invites you out and you're constantly saying no, no, making up excuses, then maybe it's worth, you know, taking, you know, up on someone on the, on the invitation. Because again, you never know in life, you know who you're going to meet or what opportunities are going to are going to present themselves to you. Again, more, you know, the people that are kind of looked upon and looked up to um, that are very successful whether in their careers or professional path or personal development, uh, a lot of times we look at these people and go, "Oh my god, they're so lucky." You know, um, sure there is luck. I mean, luck has a lot to do with a lot of different things. The success of a company, um, you know, being at the right place at the right time. However, there is a component, there is a significant component of luck that really isn't luck. Um, is it a coincidence that these successful people seem to get lucky more often? It's not. Um, again, a small portion of that is attributed to actual luck, right? I mean, you know, there, there are lucky people that it seems like, you know, but, you know, again, most of what's considered luck, if you really dissect it, is preparation, right? And, and being ready to seize that moment. Luck could slap you in the face or a great opportunity could hit you up aside the head and you might not even know it, you know? It's because you're not prepared. Um, it's like having, um, it's like knowing a language or not knowing it, right? If you know Spanish, for example, and you hear Spanish, your brain registers it naturally. If you don't know the language, you don't even hear it. Your brain doesn't comprehend or it doesn't register it. So if you're ready, if you're, if you're mentally prepared for, the, for these opportunities, when they present themselves for you to seize it, then you will have more luck in life and more successes, is my personal opinion. Um, treat, you know, you guys have heard of, you know, the, the 15 second elevator pitch, right? I say that's great, but I, I say that you need to not just wait for that elevator moment, but you need to go out and seek it, right? So again, for example, if you're out having lunch, um, as opposed to sitting by yourself, go take, go take that opportunity to, to sit next to someone and just introduce yourself. Um, you don't have to be, and I know for a lot of you guys listening right now, this is like, oh my God, I would never do that. Here in Scandinavia, that's like really like notorious as far as the culture because no one here wants to talk to anyone. They're very like, not skittish, but it's just a part of the culture like to leave people alone. Um, and that's been a stark contrast for me because as an American, we talk to everybody. You know, we, we just spark conversation. It's so easy. So um, 
I would encourage you to do that. So again, in the example I gave before, if you're in a position where, you know, you're having lunch, you know, you could easily sit by yourself and, you know, put your AirPods in and, you know, listen to a podcast and hopefully this podcast. But um, no, I would encourage you to sit down next to one, uh, next to someone that you either find interesting or whatever, and just introduce yourself. You know, I mean, what's the worst that can happen? Nine times out of 10, unless if you're, unless of course you're super creepy, um, and I hope you're not, they will um, entertain and be happy. And they'll probably go home and like tell their boyfriend or girlfriend and say, hey, I met this really cool guy just eating or having a burger at lunch and they're from the US, they're from Spain, they're from wherever, and um, they had a great conversation. And if you run into that person again, you now have some sort of rapport built to where you can say hi again and, and see, how they're, how, see how they're up to. This is how you make friends. You know, a, a significant part of our overall happiness um, is attributed to your network, your personal, your social sphere. So if you look now, if you, if you were to actually close your eyes and visualize the people around you, right? I mean, excluding your family, of course. Um, you know, maybe coworkers, it may be friends, it may be colleagues, it may be um, people you do yoga with, it may be people at the gym. Think about the social sphere that you have in your life and then ask yourself, like, who's in it? If you have trouble naming five names in your close knit circle, um, that's, in my opinion, too small. Um, in business, there's this term or this saying called your network is your net worth. Um, whether you're looking to make more money or not, take a look at your social sphere. In all likelihood, if your social sphere is limited, again, I would say if it's as low as five, maybe even 10, um, people that you can name off the top of your head as far as like who's in your inner circle um, and take a look at your income and say, okay, does my income reflect my network, right? If my network is small, is my, you know, again, it's not a science. It's not a direct correlation. You may make a shit ton of money and have two best friends, you know, because you're at work all day. I mean, that that's okay. That happens. But in all likelihood, um, if you're if you're kind of to yourself, if you don't seize opportunities to say yes to, to meetings and for coffee and for burgers, um, then you're, the likelihood that your network is huge is very small as well. And if your network is small, then, you know, again, as a, a trickle down effect of that, you know, your income may not be where it's at because it's ultimately people in life that provide you opportunities to say, hey, I have this great opportunity. Um, you seem like a perfect fit. Would you be interested? If you don't know people um, that can that can offer you these opportunities and help, you're just not going to get it. So again, my my recommendation is that um, you proactively um, look for these opportunities. Again, there may be several opportunities in a given day where you can do this. Um, and I know for a lot of people, especially if you're introverted, you think, well, I'm an introvert. That's not who I am. Um, you could be both introverted and extroverted to do this. Again, it doesn't take much effort. Um, it's really just a matter of putting yourself out there. Um, and I personally think personal development, most of it um, does come from, you know, working outside your comfort zone. Okay, so all of us have a threshold. I mean, if you're, if you're, an ext if you're a comedian, if you're the, the class clown, your threshold perhaps is a lot larger for what's, con what's uncomfortable for you. Um, so you may really need to kind of stretch your boundaries to to get in that uncomfortable zone, um, area. But um, if you're if you're the normal, you know Jane Doe or or, or, or John Doe, um, and your comfort level is very small, then it's very easy to to look for opportunities to to put yourself out there. It may just be a matter of saying hi to someone. If you if you're riding the bus, for example, you know, um, sit next to someone and say, hey, how's your day? You know. Um, there's a lot of people that are, you know, it, not just in America, but but globally, um, loneliness is a pandemic. You know, we just went through COVID-19 and, it, you know, unfortunately, uh, you know, it took the lives of a lot of people. But um, believe it or not, loneliness um, as a source of, 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 of the issue has called a, a lot of um, medical issues and um, is, is a really unfortunately, a big part of why people are unhappy and unhealthy. And so, you know, you just saying hi, introducing yourself and, and asking how they're doing, maybe something that brightens their day, you know? Um, so there's a lot of, there's a lot of great things that come from, again, putting yourself out there into the universe, 
Um, there's what, six and a half billion people on earth. Um, there's plenty of people that will, would love to have a conversation with you. Again, you don't have to necessarily have an in-depth conversation with these people and it may lead to that, which is fantastic. Uh, but just introducing yourself and just like that, that, that rush of feeling you'll get, um, after the conversation is over and you said, Hey, great, nice to meet you. Um, have a great day. There's nothing like it. I mean, we're, we're social beings, we're social animals. Um, and so I put it on you today um, and challenge you that if you, if you find this uncomfortable, then great. I mean, we're in a great position here. So if you find this uncomfortable, again, go out. If, if it's just once a week, you know, if, you, if that's what you need to start with or once a month um, and then kind of work your way up to like once a, a day, you know, or maybe multiple times a day, um, uh, you know, I think that's important. Again, you don't have to be great to start, but you do have to start to be great. Um, so start somewhere and I, and I, and I, so, and I wholeheartedly support you in doing that. Um, you know, and I, and I certainly hope that, you know, I can create more content like this that, uh, that pushes you past your comfort zone and that we can all grow together, um, to be better, more happy, more fulfilled human beings in life until next time, guys. Thank you.